If your Twitch stream looks laggy, pixelated, or just bad in general, then you probably aren't using the best settings for your setup, which is likely causing you to lose viewers. And we don't want that. So let's dive in to see what the best settings are for you so you can figure out what's causing your McDonald's Wi-Fi looking stream to look like that. And there's a couple pesky settings that might be causing your problems. So make sure to watch to the end and don't skip around because you might miss one. Otherwise, you might miss the one pain in the butt that's causing your stream to look like doo-doo. So let's open up our streaming software. If you're using OBS Studio, it's going to be easier to diagnose what's causing your problems. But if you're using Streamlabs, I'll point out the differences and what you can do instead. And if you're wondering where I got this nice starting soon screen, it's actually my streamer starter pack, which is linked down below. But for starters, if your stream looks bad and you know you're running on a not so great computer, then switching from Streamlabs to OBS might help you out because it will reduce your CPU usage because there's less going on in OBS Studio naturally than there is Streamlabs. But the easiest way to figure out what's going wrong with your stream is actually inside OBS Studio. So if you're on Streamlabs, you can either download OBS studio and run your stream or you can follow along and try these different settings that we changed throughout the video to see if they fix it so if you're in obs studio the first thing that i want you to do is go over to the settings in the bottom right corner so click that button and then we're going to go over to first the stream tab and make sure that the multi-track video this enable enhanced broadcasting is turned off we don't want that on and you're only going to see this if you have twitch as your main service otherwise it's not going to pop up because this is specifically for twitch and then what we'll do is we're going to click on enable bandwidth test mode right here here and then click apply because that way when we go to test our stream we'll hit start streaming in a second it'll test our stream like it's actually live but it's not actually going to broadcast to twitch so once you've done that we'll hit okay and then now we're going to hit start streaming it's going to tell you that you have obs configured in bandwidth test mode which basically just means the channel is not actually going to go live on twitch but we're going to pretend it is so that way we can see what's causing the problems so we're going to hit yes and then now it's going to look like we're live it says stop streaming we got drop frames here we got bitrate and all that good stuff but what we actually want to look at is if we go to the very top where it has all of these little options here we're going to click on the view option and then click on stats and here we'll see the important information that we need unfortunately if you're running Streamlabs, they don't have this advanced stats bar however they do have this one down here the performance window which you can click on but it's not going to give us all of the information that we need unfortunately however this is also a good option if you're running into issues on Streamlabs. So let's go back to OBS. So once we're in the stats bar, there's three things that we want to look at. We have frame skip due to rendering lag. We have skipped frames due to encoding lag. And then we have dropped frames network here. And depending on which one of these is causing you issues, we can change different settings to fix them. You can also open up the task manager by hitting control, shift, and escape at the same time to get even more data on the CPU, the RAM, and a bunch of other stuff. You can also click on this little button here and it'll tell you the CPU, memory, disk drives, Wi-Fi, GPU, all that good stuff, which is a little complicated right now. So let's not worry about that. But to break this down, if you're having a bunch of dropped frames, this has to do with your internet. So the easiest one here is to just restart your router because sometimes if you don't do it enough, it will just cause congestion issues. So go ahead and just restart your routers to unplug it. Wait a couple seconds, plug it back in. Fix number two for dropped frames is using an ethernet cable. Cause if you're streaming through Wi-Fi, it's going to be really inconsistent. So using a cable to hardwire it in is going to make it a lot more consistent. Number three is to use something like speed test to check your internet speed to make sure that your upload speed is high enough for you to actually use the bit rate that you're streaming at, which I'll go over more in detail in a second. And then another fix is this little pesky setting. So let's find that. So I'm actually going to close this. I'm going to turn off my test stream because we already know what we're doing. So that way I can edit the settings. So we're going to go back into the settings. And we're actually going to go to the advanced tab and we're going to scroll all the way down until we see network and then dynamically change bitrate to manage congestion beta, you're going to actually want to turn that off. I had mentioned turning this on in past videos, and the idea behind it is that it will dynamically change your bitrate based on how much internet you have at the time. So if someone's watching Netflix on the same Wi-Fi that you're using, then it'll lower the quality of your stream instead of buffering all the time. But word on the street is, is that it actually doesn't work as good as it's supposed to, and that little things on your computer might actually spike this to actually cause problems. So to just avoid it altogether, we're just going to turn this off from now on. And then the last fix for drop frames is simply lowering your bit rate, which I'll show you in a second when we go over the settings. The second type of frames are frames missed due to the rendering lag, and that's going to have to do with your GPU, aka your graphics card. In order to fix that, we got a few things we can do. The first fix for that is just going into whatever game you're playing and lowering all of the graphics settings, so that way it's not working your graphics card so hard. Second thing is lowering your settings in OBS, which I'll show you how to do in a second. The third fix is closing extra stuff that's on your computer that's also 
using your graphics card. And then the last fix for this is lowering the resolution that you're streaming at. So a lot of us stream at 1080p, you might want to consider streaming at 720p, which I'll also show you in a second. It's becoming a recurring thing of showing you in a second, but I promise we're going to get there. I just want to get through this first, just so we can navigate to your problem specifically. The last one is going to be skipped frames. That's going to be this one right here. This is going to be similar to the lag frames, except instead of overloading your GPU, you're overloading your CPU. So the first fix is also lowering your stream settings. The second fix is closing software that's using CPU, aka Google Chrome tabs or anything else that's running on your computer. And the third option is using a different encoder. If you're using the X264 encoder, it's using your CPU. So you might need to get a graphics card that can actually use the encoder that way if you already don't have a GPU encoding option. So enough of this boring stuff, which is very important. Don't get me wrong, but I know it's not everyone's things. Everyone just wants the settings. So let's actually go into the settings. So I'm going to close here. We're going to go to the settings. And the first place that we want to go to is the video tab. So to keep this very simple, the base canvas resolution is whatever you're playing at. I'm playing on a 1080p monitor, so I'm using the 1080 option. And I want to stream at 1080p here. So I'm using the output scaled resolution as 1080. However, if my stream starts to look like garbage, then you might want to consider rescaling down to 1280 by 720p to see if that might be an issue because your GPU is getting overloaded. So the first fix here is lowering from 1080 to 720. Now, if you can, I would recommend using Lanscos because it's going to be the best one. However, if your computer's still struggling, you might want to choose a lower one like by Cubic. And I still want to stream at 60 FPS because that's pretty much the standard. You could mess with 30 FPS, but I'm not a huge fan. So first fix is changing your resolution here. So if you think it's your GPU, that's the problem then you can try dropping it right here. Otherwise, if you know it's not your GPU, you can keep it at 1080p or whatever resolution you want to stream at. So we're going to hit apply. And then now we're going to go over to the output tab. Now, if your stream looks like crap, then what you want to do is first change from advanced, which I'm sure many people tell you to use in all the other videos. And we're going to change it to simple because if you can't get your stream looking good in the first place, let's take a step back, try and get it looking nice through the simple settings because it's going to make everything a lot easier to understand. So if you're on simple, what you want to do first is change your video bit rate. If you're streaming on Twitch, the soft cap is 6,000 kilobits per second. However, occasionally you can get it up to 8,000, but it's not consistent. So theoretically, you could stream at 8,000 kilobits per second if you know your internet's really good. But if you know your internet's not that great, you might want to lower it down to 6,000. This is also where speedtest.net comes in handy, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. So if you click go, it'll tell you your download speed and your upload speed. So we'll give it a couple seconds. As you can see here, we have 120 megabits per second for the upload. Download doesn't really matter too much. The upload is what we're focusing on. So realistically, the minimum that you'd want to stream at 8,000 bit rate would be 10 megabits per second. So we have a lot of breathing room here, but basically 10 megabits per second will allow us to stream at 8,000 bit rate. So since we have about 12 times that we'll be good to go. But depending on your upload, this will determine the bit rate that you put into OBS or Streamlabs. So for me, I'm going to put 8,000 doesn't say I'm actually going to get 8,000 on Twitch, but that is the hard cap for the audio bit rate. You could leave it at 160. I prefer 320 because it's going to give us the best audio bit rate. The video encoder. This is where a lot of people get switched up. You're really going to have three options here. If you have an AMD card, then you're going to have AMD options. I have an NVIDIA card, so I'll be using the NVENC H264. That's the one that you'll want to use if you have an NVIDIA card. I don't have an AMD card, so I can't tell you the best one. I know some people use AV1, but I can't vouch for it. But the big difference here is that if you have a graphics card option here, you'll choose that one. And if you don't, then you could use X264. But this video encoder is going to be using your CPU instead of GPU, which means if you're getting a lot of skipped frames in your stats bar, chances are you're using X264 as your encoder, and it just can't keep up with that. So you're going to need to switch your encoder to one that uses your GPU. And if you don't know which one to use, honestly, just experiment with a bunch if you have a bunch here and find the one that works best for you after monitoring the stats after the test streams. But if you have in NVIDIA NVENC H264, then you're usually going to want to pick that one. So I'll be picking that one. For the encoding preset here, honestly, you want to try and keep it between medium and slowest. Slowest is going to give you the best quality, but it's also going to make your computer work a lot harder. So if you're running into issues still, you might want to slowly lower this down until you're not having bad quality streams anymore. So that's another thing you want to experiment with. And really the cool part about simple is that's all the BS we have to deal with. Now you might notice that if we are on simple, we don't have access to the Twitch VOD track, which is the whole copyright music thing that people have been using as a workaround. However, unfortunately, using this doesn't still remove you from copyright, at least from the future, because you're still playing copyrighted music, you're just not getting your VODs muted. So if you still want to use this, that's totally up to you. That's at your own risk. But low key, if your stream just looks bad, then the first thing we want to worry about is making it look good. So we want to keep it on the simple settings for now. However, if you want to venture in the advanced mode, which you can, I'll leave a couple charts that you can follow from Twitch themselves in the description down below, as well as YouTube too. That way you can scroll down and they'll tell you the advanced settings 
settings right here. And if you're streaming to YouTube, they got a bunch of stuff here as well. So once again, if you're having issues, just keep it simple, dude. Just put it on simple because that's the main priority right now is getting your stream to look good. And then we'll take it to the next level after that. So now that we have our output settings set up, we made sure that our stream enable enhanced broadcasting is turned off. You can now run more tests just to make sure that you're not going to have any more drop frames, skip frames, or lag frames. And if you've done all of these things and you're still running into issues, there's one more thing that you might have to do. Also, by the way, when you do get it to look nice, you're not having problems, make sure to turn this off and then hit apply. Otherwise, next time you hit start streaming, it's not actually going to go live. But if you've done all of this, including the video resolution too, and you're still running into issues, then it might actually be the server that you're streaming to on Twitch. And that's when you're going to want to go to the stream tab here. And instead of doing auto recommended, you're actually going to click here and you'll be able to choose the exact server that you need to use. But what's the best server you might be asking? Well, there's a tool called Twitch test that you can download. Shout out to Nutty and Stream Scheme. Love those guys. You'll basically download and run this and you'll be able to pick the closest servers to your area. Then you'll change the test duration to like about medium or long. And you're going to want to input your stream key, which you can find in your Twitch settings. And essentially you're going to run the test and it's going to tell you which server has the highest bandwidth, the highest quality, and the highest RTT. Those are the three values that you want to keep an eye on. And then you'll see which server is the best server to stream to, which then you'll simply go into OBS and change it from auto to whatever server showed to be the best server for you in Twitch test. And doing all of these different things should net you a beautiful looking stream. And if it's not, then you need to upgrade that toaster that you're using, bro. It's not 2011 no more. Stop using a pizza box and get a real computer. And if you're ready to take your stream to the next level, then watch this playlist to the side of me. It's going to tell you everything that you need to do. My name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.